Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the St. Patrick's Day meeting of the uh, Morro Bay Planning Commission. I am told by staff that there will be no green beer at intermission. Uh, <laughs> darn it. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna, uh, we'll start our meeting as uh, we usually do with a moment of uh, silence. Okay, thank you. If you'd all like to rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a time set aside. For, uh, let the record uh, reflect uh, that uh, we have a quorum and that um, uh, the meeting is called to order and we will start with uh, uh, announcements on the part of the planning commissioners. Uh, any announcements? Richard? Uh, yes. On Easter Sunday, uh, uh, we're, there's going to be an Easter service at the Rock and it's something that me and my grandson, this will be, we did security already. This will be our fourth time. He's seven years old, so. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, sunrise and 10 o'clock, and everybody's welcome. There's coffee and nice uh, pastries and stuff, too. So if you're surfing out there, just stop by, get a cup, and then go back in the water, too. I'd just like to um, mention the fact that um, the last week I attended, uh, I guess, the first meeting of a group of um, more based citizens that's uh, sort of being led, head, headed up by uh, Councilman uh, Smuckler uh, to um, look at the possibility of establishing a green belt around the city. And uh, uh, that's going to be an ongoing effort. I'd like to encourage anyone in the community that would like to get involved in that to, to get involved. It's a good time to do it, you know, before um, th this community becomes Moro Yucas or, or, or Oso Moro or, you know, there was, a, there was a time not too long ago when Glendale and Los Angeles were not the same place and uh, so now's the time to, to start working on that. Um, okay, um, I have on my agenda that we're going to elect the chair and vice chair, but I think we did that already, so. That was embarrassing enough once, so we won't do it again. <laughs> I, wish, I wish we, we liked the outcome. <laughs> yeah, we, I th is this a recall? <laughs> okay, so this is the time for members of the public to comment um, uh, on items which are not on tonight's agenda. Uh, so anyone who's out here and would like to speak to the community or to the commission, please come forward, give us your name, and let us hear from you. Good evening, commissioners. I'm Casey Caldwell. I'm a Morro Bay resident. And I want to uh, announce that the Neighborhood Compatibility Coalition is meeting on Wednesday, March 25th from 7 to 8 p.m. at the Morro Bay Community Center, 1001 Kennedy Way, down there across from Albertsons in the library. Um, I'd like to invite the PC uh, Planning Commission and the public to attend. The topics of discussion at this meeting are uh, private view protection and getting provisions in the general plan that require thoughtful and respectful development. We'll talk about what other cities are doing around California. There are several cities that have already passed laws to protect private views and um, have neighborhood compatibility guidelines that are thorough and, and well drafted. So I hope that you'll come out. I hope the public will come out and support us and get involved. We'll have these really nice t-shirts for sale so you can support the cause. Um, it's NECO for Neighborhood Compatibility Coalition. And that's where everybody counts or nobody counts. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, could you could you repeat the date and time, please? Thank you. I'd love to. It's uh, Wednesday, March twenty fifth, and it's from seven to eight p.m. at the uh, Morro Bay Community Center, and it'll be in the back of the building, back uh, past the senior center part. So we hope to see you there. And if anyone has any questions, they can call me. Uh, my phone number is 540-1470. Thank you. OK, thank you, Casey. Anyone else uh, like to speak? No? Some of us are old enough to remember when NECO were those little wafers that you <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, Moving on to the consent calendar, we have only the current and advanced planning processing list. Are there any questions or comments, or would staff like to make any remarks or point anything out? No comments. Okay. So do we have a motion to accept that? So moved. A second. Okay. In favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It passes unanimously. So we'll move on to our public hearing for this evening. Um, this is case number CP0-446 and UP0-406 involving a property at 219 Marina Street uh, here in Morro Bay. And I believe that uh, Whitney is going to talk to us about this. Good evening, commissioners, members of the public. Um, yes, this is a... Uh, project that's in addition to a non-conforming structure on a lot that's about 6,000 square feet, a conforming lot in Morro Bay on uh, Marina Street. It's at the top of uh, the bluff that overlooks the Embarcadero. You might be able to see that on that little vicinity map up there. This is a uh, view of the existing house on the site looking from Marina and the proposed um, sort of facade renewal of the existing house and the, you can see part of the addition toward the back there. Um, this is a photo simulation of uh, the proposed design looking um, up from Embarcadero. Down below is now just um, pretty much of an empty lot that's sort of informally used for parking. Um, I think the site plan is going to be a little difficult to read from here, but on the uh, westerly side of the lot is pretty much the, the top of Bluff, and then it slopes pretty steeply. Um, eastward from that point, it's, it's relatively flat. And this um, site topography plan shows the existing structure on the site. So this is the proposed site plan. Um, most of the addition is, uh, all of the addition really, is to the rear of what's existing right now. Um, it does definitely expand the, the footprint on the lot. Um, this is just a little uh, slide for, that shows helical piers, which we'll talk about later in terms of um, development on the bluff top. Uh, the project uh, does, uh, the addition does comply with um, zoning site development standards. The existing house is uh, non-conforming in terms of its front setback, which is 15 feet versus 20 feet that's required. And um, the height is 26 plus feet, uh, where 25 is the maximum allowed height. At the time the building was built, the property was zoned R4. And um, it met the, the standards of that particular time. But things have changed. Now it is zoned R2. We'll get back to that if I misspoke. Um, this is the, uh, these are elevation drawings just coming up. So again, a view from Marina Street. Uh, this would be the rear of the house uh, looking north. Uh, the west elevation looking out over Embarcadero, and the east elevation looking inland. And then I just have a few more here. Um, 
There is a uh, roof deck proposed over uh, a portion of the new addition. That's approximately right here. And then this is the remodeled upper level of the existing um, structure, which a little, a little elevator right over here, which we may discuss in a minute. And, um, and then finally, the lower floor plan. So again, the remodeled existing, and then the new structure, new garage to the rear of the lot. I think that pretty much ends our slides. Um, there are a few issues with this project that we, we may discuss. I'll just say that uh, staff is recommending approval um, subject to um, conditions and findings in the resolution. Um, but some of the issues, just to go through a few things, um, are related to the height limitations. Um, it was pointed out to me, and I can't believe that I really missed this, um, the elevator that's proposed on the, um, for the building has a, a new roof to it, and it is approximately 22 feet tall. So uh, within 50 feet of the bluff, in the bluff setback area, in this particular part of the bluff, um, the maximum height is 17 feet for uh, gabled or roofs that have a pitch of like 4 and 12 or greater. Um, for flat roofs, it's only 14 feet. So um, technically this new roof, um, even though it is lower and part of the existing structure, which already is nonconforming, um, does uh, exceed that particular maximum height limit. Um, as do a couple of chimneys, one existing. Maybe I can unfade this. Oh, this isn't good. Oh, it went away. Very sad. Oh, 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 not good. Um, my helper is coming out right now. Um, so uh, there is a section in our zoning ordinance that allows for um, certain roof mechanical chimneys, that kind of thing, to uh, exceed the otherwise maximum height subject to use permit pr uh, approval. So that issue is before you this evening. Thank you. I'll just get an elevation. You can see um, in this particular elevation, right at the center of the two-story structure is an existing chimney. Um, staff is going to recommend that that go away. It really doesn't um, need to be there, actually, as part of this project. So that would reduce, um, let's get this. It's sort of toward the center, top center of this um, view from Marina Street. Um, is that from Marina Street? Yeah. No, actually, that's north. That's from the back. OK, there it is, from Marina Street. Um, there is the, the other uh, chimney that kind of overlooks the Embarcadero. It also is technically higher than, obviously, 17 feet. And here is the, um, the roof for the elevator. So there is an allowance. I mean, as I noted, there is a provision in the zoning ordinance to allow those kind of height exceptions. And that will be up to your commission to determine if any or all of them go away. Um, another uh, potential issue with this project has to do with um, landscaping. Site development. Oh, let's go to this slide. So you can see, where's my little guy? Um, a, par a portion of the front patio is actually outside the property line and in the right of way proposed. Uh, this is not an uncommon situation in Morro Bay, as we all know. Um, there are lots of, of similar situations. Um, however, there is sort of a preponderance of hardscape proposed with this project. And um, on, in the Bluff Development Standards, it even talks about where you're um, working on the, the Bluff face and not, in fact, building, which you're allowed to do here in the Embarcadero. Um, drought tolerant, erosion control, 
native kinds of plantings are recommended. And so you may want to weigh in on if all of this patio area goes or stays or part of it goes and is replaced with landscaping and, um, and also this development here in the right-of-way. I would note that our public works department um, didn't have a particular objection to um, this second retaining wall and patio development, um, they would just need to get a special encroachment permit. And then finally, um, I did have some questions, I'm trying to see here, um, about, these don't show so well, about actually development right up um, on the bluff and uh, what the ramifications are with um, the foundation and um, grading and given um, some standards that we have uh, that speak to maintaining the natural landform and not using retaining walls. Um, I will try and answer some questions regarding that if you still have those and um, I may also look to the architect to help me address those. So without um, prolonging my presentation, I'm happy to answer questions and um, we can draft some additional conditions if necessary or adjust them. Um, but we are recommending approval. And so I will quit talking now and try and answer your questions. Whitney, you described this as a duplex lot. This is, this is zoned for a duplex? Um, our R2 zoning is called duplex residential. Mm -hmm. And in our housing element, doesn't it talk to, speak to not taking multifamily potential lots and turning them into single family lots? It does speak to that. In our zoning ordinance, um, single family houses are um, still allowed in an R2 zone, but uh, not, for instance, um, I, don't, I think we're looking at eliminating that allowance in um, higher density, especially R4 residential zones. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, this is not a debatable issue for this one? Not really. Okay. And then the other thing is with the new construction, why isn't it at the new setback line? And where, which setback are we talking about? The 20 foot setback. Uh, because very interestingly, between Surf and Anchor Street, um, on this bluff area that uh, uh, sort of overlooks the Embarcadero, we have um, special development standards in place, kind of recognizing historical development in that area where um, buildings and uh, different structures have come down the bluff face and been built right to the edge um, and, and sort of realizing that, that there would be a continuation of that kind of development, hotels maybe that would back right up into the bluff. We have that in various different areas. Um, so this part of town has its own special development standards that allow for development in the otherwise bluff setback area and even down the face of the bluff, subject to um, having a geologic report prepared, which they did. So the setback's not really applicable. So the bluff setback in this area is not applicable, but the side yard, you know, zoning kind of setback still would be. And I guess that's it for now. Thanks. <clears throat> um, we do have a bluff height limitation setback, don't we? We do. Okay. And that, um, it seems like... That's the 50 feet, within 50 feet of the bluff edge, right. it's 14 feet for flat roof structures and 17 feet for 4 and 12 or greater pitched roof structures. Okay. Um, seems like several parts of this building are above that section. There's a screening wall that's not a 4 and 12 pitch that's above our 14 foot and it looks like it's inside the that, that, that screens the equipment. 
I believe that is outside the 50 foot setback. Okay. It's not. He's shaking his head no. I don't think so. Okay. I'm but, looking at my plans. But, I, but, but it's. Um, I'm sorry, are you talking about the screen on the roof yeah, deck? The, the screening for the dual pack system for the roof, the H, roof HVAC, HVAC. So that's there. Um, so that, that it's is. It's not clearly delineated on my plans, which is, which is inside that 14 oh, okay. foot and what's 17 foot that I can see. I, think I looked at that. I, I, I think it's right at 17, which is yeah. allowable with a pitched roof. But it's not a pitched roof. That, that part is not. No. Yeah, so the part of the pitched roof is fine. I'm just concerned about the screening that's, that's above the 14-foot height. Well, that kind of falls into that same basket of, I guess, elevator roof, good call, um, chimneys, uh, mechanical screening, we could, you could choose to make um, an exception to allow that to happen, or you could choose to not allow that height exception. And then does the, the um, glass railing fit in that same basket of? It, yeah, it absolutely does. Okay, and that's, um, that's well, a new structure, correct? That it, is an, that it is a new structure, and um, the thing about that is that in other S2, zoned areas which have the same, that same similar 14 foot for flat roofed and 17 foot for pitched roof structures. Um, it's specifically called out, no, this, uh, this 14 foot applies also to deck railings, um, but in this Embarcadero area, it's not specifically called out. So it, I don't know if that was an omission, if we should apply that conservatively here as well, or I don't know. Okay. And then the, according to the building codes that I'm familiar with, the, you, can, you need to have a hard edge. You can't have a glass edge on the top of the railing. So uh, this shows a curved glass edge. I believe it would need to be a hard metal protectant on the top edge. I'll I'm going to let, if you don't mind, I'm going to, um, I hope you'll save that question for the architect okay. too. Okay, good. Um, the other question I have is, what is the height limitation on the property to the west of that? What's the? The property to the west down below? Yeah, down below. Oh, that's a really good question. Because I'm wondering mm -hmm. what the build-out height would be on that property and how it it's going to be 25 or 30 feet so and and we're at baseline 26 feet do you know the elevation of that property is probably not much above sea level um i'm not absolutely certain i'd have to dig around a little i'm just okay. trying to think of how tall that bluff is the, the geology report said 20. 16 feet said the bluff was 16 feet. That's what feet. I was thinking. So the, it seems like it's taller, but it may just be 16 feet. Yeah. It may be the height of this building adjacent mm -hmm. in the picture. I mean, yeah. that looks to me like... Well, we've got a topo. The topo called out at 25 feet at the property line on the topo. So I'm just wondering how high that west, the, the property to the west could be built out at. I'm, I'm going to say 30 feet, and if I'm wrong, I'm going to get back to you after I look at my zoning okay. regulations. And we're probably at least eight feet above, above, above sea level at that point for that baseline for that property. So that's your other, okay. I, yeah. I'll look on my topo okay. map as well. Okay. Um, I think that's it for now. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you, Vinny. Richard? Um, <clears throat> you had a, can you just expand on the, helical piers that you have pictured? Or do you want to save that for later? Couldn't hear you back there. The helical piers you, you mentioned, and you said you were going to talk about them later? Sure. Um, because this, this um, site sits kind of at the edge of a slope, and they're developing close to, very close and even down that slope face. And just due to the nature of soils there, they're kind of alluvial soils is what I understand. Um, 
uh, the idea is to provide a foundation, a solid foundation that does not surcharge that slope or in any way rely on it um, structurally because um, that would be a very bad idea. <laughs> and, <laughs> and just given the um, steepness of the slope and, and um, just basic engineering of foundations, um, these uh, helical piers allow for that additional um, structural support uh, without surcharging on that slope. And uh, you probably have it. How, how, how deep are they going? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if they know exactly right now, and again, I'll let the architect answer that, but I think I heard somewhere in the vicinity of seven feet. So right. it's not like, you know, to China. Right. That's it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I had um, I had w one question about the the front setback, Whitney, um, and I apologize I didn't bring this up sooner. It just kind of occurred to me now, um, but but um, it, it seems to me I recall a provision, and correct me if I'm wrong, for a reduced front setback in residential areas that are already developed, such that if all of the other houses have a reduced setback. You can go, and just looking. I'm just looking. You know, G Google Earth. Hello. I'm just looking at the the setback of all the other residences along that street, and it actually looks like the existing house here is Set one of the through. furthest back from the street. So would would that would that provision re regarding reduced setback in developed residential areas, would that not apply here and, and make the front setback actually conforming? It, it quite possibly could. That's um, not something that they applied for. I forget if that just requires a minor use permit or, or use permit approval um, for the averaging of the street yard setbacks. Um, and I know that that house does, you're right, it does set back a little bit further than, than some of the others just going up the street. Um, I haven't looked at that exactly, but it could apply here. Could, could potentially be Yes, uh, to their yeah, advantage to make that not non-conforming. Right. Okay. But that would require, um, I believe it's, Generally, it's an administrative use permit to to acknowledge that it's not just a given. I don't think. Okay. Um, no more questions. So we're going to open this up to public comment. And uh, traditionally, we would ask the applicant or the applicant's representative to speak first. Uh, so please come forward and tell us who you are, and let's hear from you. Good evening, uh, Chris Parker, the architect on the project. Um, I think Whitney did a great presentation. I, I brought a few slides as well. Um, is there a? Yes, here you are. They're, they're somewhat redundant, so I'll just kind of pop through them, but some of them might show the project a little more visible for you. Existing photos of the site. And these are the, the proposed renderings of the site showing it both from, from Embarcadero area and up above the property on Marina. Uh, basically, we're looking to use materials such as uh, cement, cement siding, uh, metal roofing, um, and, and uh, permeable pavers. Uh, as, you, oops, sorry, as you saw on the uh, landscape plan, there is a decent amount of pavers. We're replacing the driveway with them as well, but we chose to go with the permeable pavers to to help let the, the water trickle back down to the site. But one of the keys we'll want to address and make sure we adhere to based on the geo, the geo study is to keep the water away from the bluff area. So we'll basically be draining stuff back to inland portions of the site. Uh, there was the color board there, basically white windows and trim, the tan siding I mentioned, and the uh, metal roofing. The, these are what will kind of show the project a little bit easier to see. The, the dark blue area is the existing uh, footprint of the structure. Uh, we basically have the existing site plan and the new site plan. The, the light blue turquoise color, that's indicating the area of, uh, of our addition, the, the, new, the new footprint area. Um, 
basically this is floor plan showing the existing area and the new area, same correlation, the light blue is the, the addition of the lower floor. And then on the upper floor, we basically have the dark blue is the existing, the existing footprint, and then the greens are, are the deck areas. Um, and then we have our exterior elevations. Try to address a couple of the comments on the glass railing. Um, I believe with a thicker edge, we'll be able to handle it because we're only going 12 to 14 inches, or I believe it was 24 inches in height. Um, our other alternative to that though, which wouldn't be as appealing for public would be to bring that sloped roof up to that height because we can actually go up to the 17 foot limit with that sloped roof because it's larger than the four and 12. But we figure leaving the glass down would kind of break up the, the massing a little bit as well. Um, trying to think of what some of the other comments were. But if I'll be here if you guys have more comments and questions. Hopefully I've addressed them and Whitney's addressed them as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, why don't you just stay there, okay. Mr. Parker, and we'll see if there's any questions from the commission. We we could we could. Okay, that's fine. Okay, we'll we'll okay. get back to you in a minute. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So, anyone else who would like to comment? Sure, come forward. Where the cost is. Good evening, I'm Dave Costa, and we reside at 7575 18th Avenue in Lemoore, and also our second home is at 737 Piney Way here in Morro Bay, which we've lived here for over 20 years. Um, the project where it came from has been in the family. Uh, my aunt moved here, and I was with her in 1964, bought the property. In fact, we looked at one right above your building here, and we looked at the one on the Barcadero. Chose that one. They lived there for all those years. And then, in fact, when Sharon and I were at Cal Poly going to school there, that's, we used to take care of that house for my aunt, and we'd come over there and spend weekends there and stuff like that. It's always been in the family. So uh, we were the ones that uh, my aunt wanted us to build next to them to help take care of them. So that's where this multiple unit came from. And we were going to build in there, and then my uncle, her husband, got sick, and he got ill, and they thought it would be too much for them. So what Sharon and I did is we bought a place up the street on 737 uh, Piney Way. We lived up there, so that way we can come down, keep an eye on them, take care of stuff like that. And so over time, she lived to be almost 100 years old, 99 and 10 months. It's a beautiful area to live, and people live a long time in that neighborhood. And so she passed it on, gave it to, uh, gave it to us, and so we're trying to carry on the family tradition, clean it up, fix it up, turn it into a really nice place there on the bluff so our families can spend time like we did for the last 50 years coming to this location. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's our problem. And our grandchildren now, so, so it'll be like the fourth generation enjoying already. And we're committed to Morro Bay and we're happy to be here. So. Thank you. So thank you. Hi, uh, my name is David Booker, and I own a condo unit in Sea Harbor Villas, uh, Unit 3D, which is to the north. Would that be correct? To the north of this project. And my only concern, one, I've never been to one of these meetings, uh, and two, I was just maintaining the view corridor, uh, if that's the right word, uh, to use, and it appears that the applicant's done a nice job to keep the view as you're looking from, I guess, the east elevation. See, this is where I think we need to be. Is that, is that be correct, Mr. Yeah. And then, so we would still be able to look out and have this view here, which is, I think, wonderful. I like it the way the applicant has it, and um, I like the glass railing, and uh, it appears that they're trying to preserve a view corridor for the rest of us folks, you know, that live back uh, up the hill a little bit. You know, my, I had a question that came up. What happens to them 
when somebody builds, you know, down below and that parking lot there with that elevation, do they get blocked? Or is there some protection? <laughs> that would be my only concern is uh, if I owned that house, you know, I'd be concerned about the elevation of what's built in front of me, just like I am now. So anyway, my concern originally was I thought we were going to, they're going to have blocked the view corridor. I can see that it's not going to be, and I compliment the applicant for that. Okay. Casey Caldwell again uh, with the Neighborhood Compatibility Coalition, and um, I have a few concerns. One is the first and second photo that the architect showed really uh, gave the impression that the house um, to the east behind this structure will have its view completely annihilated. Um, you can see when, when he goes from one screen to the next screen, that house just disappears. So I'm concerned about that. Um, I'm concerned that this structure is nearly doubling in size to almost 4,000 square feet. Um, there were a lot of unanswered questions uh, with the staff, uh, things that I think still need to be addressed and, and looked into. One comment that concerned me was um, that it, uh, it may not be, um, it may not be, uh, um, in line with the uh, development codes, but there are a lot of houses around that aren't. And, um, and I don't think that's any reason to continue doing things that aren't to Hoyle. Um, I'd also ask huh? the uh, Planning Commission to consider an overlay, because when I see the photograph of the existing structure, which was shown first in the staff report, I never saw another photo of the existing structure with an overlay or in a comparison. All, all the new drawings are quite lovely, but I can't get a feel for how much bigger this thing is going to look. I don't know if story polls are called for, but what I would like to do is remind the, the Planning Commission of the, the principles of neighborhood compatibility and hope that you will address those with this particular project. I think you are all doing just a great job. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Janet Bridell. I'm a resident of Memorial Bay. I live on Bernardo Avenue. And um, I became interested a while back uh, in neighborhood compatibility and also uh, views that are blocked because I had a personal um, experience with that. So my question tonight is, are there any other people that uh, would have their view blocked as a result of the um, plans that they made? Uh, that was my only question. I don't know who to address that to, but uh, I hope that's taken into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. My name is uh, Vicki Ryle. I live at 229 Marina, which is two houses to the east of this project. And as far as blocking views are concerned, I think that most of the construction is low. The house, the original house, blocks the views that's going to be blocked. Uh, as far as the people to immediately to the uh, east of them, they have looked it over themselves. And if you see their house is very low, they will have a slight view at the back of their house of the rock blocked from the garage, but most of their view is at the front looking towards the South Bay. Uh, and they express no objection to the plans. We feel that the Costas have done a very nice job uh, of remodeling and ex adding on to this property. Uh, even David has mentioned that they're trying to lower some elevations there that help us have a better view, too. And we appreciate their concern for the neighborhood. Uh, 
Okay. Anyone else would like to speak? So we'll, with that, we'll bring it back to the commission uh, for discussion, questions. Uh, if, you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to ask questions of the architect, this would be the time to do it. Yeah, um, Chris? Just some clarifications. Yeah. I didn't. Um, I didn't see a section in the drawings. I might have missed it, but I didn't see one. Um, what is the the ceiling height on the proposed area below the deck, and what's your what's your elevation above the first finished floor of the of the deck of the walking surface of the deck? So the, the the proposed plate height, I believe, or ceiling right. height of the lower floor is, is nine foot. Nine foot. Um, but what was the fall the, of the height of? Yeah, the what's portion? your you know on this this deck area that's that's new where you have the glass railing? Yes. What's the elevation on the uh, finished floor of the deck? Basically a foot above that, or thirteen so inches above that. You're basically um, ten foot above yeah. Yeah, first would, floor. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Your TJIs and and plywood, basically. Okay. And um, was there any reason, you know, wh uh, why did you do, the, you know, what was your thinking in putting the dual pack on top of the roof instead of in the attic space of the garage? You know, they were wanting a dual pack unit, and I believe that's what that was the follow up question. I think I I left off was about the screening. I believe actually somewhere in the code it's required that we screen that. But. But you, that was just kind of their choice of, to use a dual pack unit on the on the roof, a, an exterior unit. Okay, is there any reason why and you would we, choose that over a horizontal uh, horizontal flow um, HVA system that could be mounted in the I'm attic trying space? To, trying to think, I, how the the garage may have room to to get all that fit in. It's a decent slope to it, so that that may be an option on that. I'd have to yeah. confer with them. Um, okay. But that 50 foot setback is right before that. That was. If you can look on the elevation, you can see where the 50-foot line is. Okay. Um, and it was right before that we kept that screening on the further side of that 50-foot line. Uh, but it was just the owner's preference to have the dual pack unit, uh, the exterior unit. Okay. Was there a cost consideration on that, or did, did it? I think it, it, one or the other. Yeah. Okay. It just seems like you know that that roof line. You did a real nice job of tapering that roof line to your, you know, to allow more sunlight to the neighbors and stuff yeah. and then you put the screening on there it seemed right, a little right. incongruous yeah and i think the screening was kind of a follow-up of going through the code and it said yeah. mechanical equipment needed to be screened so it was kind of the follow-up of that okay would you be opposed to to investigating looking at a horizontal flow unit in, in the attic space and yeah i mean we can investigate that i i don't think they have an issue okay. with investigating that issue okay great um Let's see. Um, and so then that railing height, once again, that seems to be a, it is an issue over on the, um, on the west facing deck. I'm not even, I'm not really concerned about it on the north facing, but it seems like on the east, on the west facing. Um, and now that screening, there's the garage roof beyond that as well. So I think Whitney kind of mentioned that in her report was we have that there, but that garage roof goes up higher than that. Right, but um, okay, I'm just trying to get a good, view, you know, understanding these plans. You've, yeah. got the, you've got the glass railing there on the west face, facing the Embarcadero. Correct. Okay. And that's that's a foot eighteen inches above the top of the roof there. Above, yes. The the top of the roof line. So there'll be stanchions between them, okay. basically okay. holding them. And then that that exceeds the fourteen foot height limitation. Yes. That's where for for a, because the glass would become considered a flat rail, and that's where Whitney w mentioned that it wasn't quite penciled out in this specific area kind of like it is in uh, the beach track where we deal with it. But, um, but that's where we proposed the glass just to keep it clear. But I mentioned, like I mentioned earlier, that roof could actually go up to 17 feet if it continued the slope and we'd still get our 42 inch 
rail, but we added the glass thinking that would kind of spread it out a little bit and not make it so massive. And then, um, so I understand why you'd want to have a nine foot ceiling height in there, but have you looked at an eight foot ceiling height to drop that? Yeah, we had looked at that initially. They were just hoping for a, for a nine foot, basically get the, it would get that floor up a little higher for, for the deck per portion as well, and just to have a little roomier space. Okay. I think that's most of my concerns. Thank Thanks. You. Any questions? Chris, how much of the existing building is demolished? Demolished? Yeah. The, we're keeping the exterior, the interior is getting reworked. Basically. Okay. I'm sure you saw them. So that's the same, when we go back and forth, it's the same roof pitch. It's, a, the, it's yeah, just the same a trading roof pitch, off. It's basically the envelope is maintaining. Okay. Richard. Um, the existing foundation, same thing? On the old one, you're going to beef it up? Or? The existing foundation stays, though we'll need to do the helical piers on it as well because they, they want it to be uniform. The, the soils engineers called out that the helical piers need to go throughout. Okay. So those you'll just, we'll just cut in where we need to and add right. them and then patch back. Okay. And then uh, I also want to say that I, for me, I appreciate the photo simulation. It, Thank it's, you. It's, um, it helps me. And... Um, I um, I like what you did with, like, at least trying to be as much as you can respectful of your neighborhood Thank for you. the view. And uh, um, I like the flat roof and what you did there. Thank you. Yeah, I have, I have a few questions. Um, yeah. The, um, the, the current... Currently, the lot slopes fairly steeply away from the house, both to the south and yes. to the west. Yeah. Uh, and the plans show level pavers in those areas. Mm -hmm. So how, do you, how are you going to achieve that? How are you going to get those pavers to, to be? Sorry. To support those pavers, we would need basically a, a retaining wall along the perimeter there for those pavers, um, basically just to level off that area. I believe on the elevation I called out we, that not to exceed that over the over thirty inches. Thirty inches, yes. And, and then, so we're stepping so we're stepping that front area down to help account for that thirty inches. And then as you get towards the northern side of the lot that you have this the wooden fence there. That would be yes. That would be outside of the retaining wall or inside the retaining. The wooden wall. fence were the new wooden fence we're the showing fence. would be at the property line, so it would be outside the retaining wall. And I think the way we have it is basically we have retaining wall and pavers on one on the would be the southerly portion, and then the fence would start kind of where those end and pick up because that kind of becomes a little more of the back backyard area. So it would be like it would be, so it, looking from the west it would be six feet tall, and looking from the east it would be somewhat less than that visually, right? Cor correct. Yeah, because the it kind of the property kind of takes a dive, but it would just be a six foot tall fence at the property line at the natural grade. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so then. Um, the other question, I, I understand the, the helical pier idea. You're gonna, you're gonna, you said you were going to cut into the foundation. You're not going to do offset. You're going to cut into the foundation. So for the yeah, in the existing areas, we would have to cut into different, cut in and basically tie it in. Okay. But, but that doesn't stabilize the bluff, right? No, and I don't believe they actually want us to touch the bluff. The, the, the key here is that you know, the bluff kind of stays how it is, and we're making the house self-supportive, basically. Um, it's actually going to be taking any current um, forces that the bluff has. It'll be relieving it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just looking at the fence that's there now. It looks like that fence has been fairly mobile. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if that's the bluff's purpose or, or if it was the fence itself. But, yeah, I mean, and that's what the, the geosolutions engineer just mentioned, that the, the bluff stability, I, I think, at the one time some excavation was probably done a lot below as well and it's just kind of nothing to be to be uh to to use as a factor of safety basically okay 
And then uh, the other question I've got to ask you, I mean, I've got to, one of the findings, one of the findings that we have to make in order to uh, grant this CUP is that it is not feasible to bring the current structure into uh, conformance with the yes. code. I'm just looking at all the construction that's going. I mean, this is a massive project. There's no, I, it doesn't look to me like there's more than about six foot of interior wall that's going <laughs> to stay in the same place. And that's probably going to be replaced anyway. So I, I'm just, I guess I'm just asking, given all of that, given the amount of construction that's taking place, why would it not be feasible to bring this down to one story and put it into conformance with the code? You know, to do that, part of it would be that they would be losing about 1,200 square feet. So for their layout and what, what they were hoping to achieve, that doesn't work. But then also you factor in that 1,200 square feet. At the minimum, you're losing $200,000 of value there doing that as well. Um, and then there is the comment, and we've dealt with it on other projects, of if 50% of the properties along that street do extend past it, basically, so there you have the, the 15 foot setback that we currently have. This one doesn't exceed past the others, so there is the code language that reads, if 50% of the houses on that street don't exceed, basically you take the average of their, uh, of their front yard setback. Was no, I'm personally. Uh, let and me so just, I guess it's the height is more. Yeah. Let me just interject. My personal opinion is that probably the front yard setback is conforming. That, that's so. Then it would be the height, the height constraint. Right. Um, I think in, in all reality, if if the first floor, if that floor came off, the whole thing would kind of get leveled, and we'd be starting new. So we would be demolishing an existing structure, and we were trying to kind of just maintain what was there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Any other questions for? Okay. Then we'll bring it back for discussion. Um, who would uh, who would like to to jump in on this? Well, I'll start it off, and um, my you know my biggest concerns are the height, the extra heights that we're dealing with, you know, above, above the 14 foot that's in that 50 foot setback. Um, uh, you know, I would love, you know, if cost wasn't an issue or, you know, I would love to have them take that down to a single story and get back into the acceptable height limitation. But this is a, you know, this was built before those codes were, were in place. So I think I don't have a problem, you know, I don't have a problem with allowing the existing two-story to, to remain. Um, I do have concerns, you know, like I said, over the, the screening of that HVAC unit. I think that that would clean up that one elevation. And the, it's just, you know, I'll bring it back to the commission too, is the eight foot versus nine foot ceiling height on that first floor, you know, that requires another foot of height of that railing that's that's there um, on that west side. It is transparent, but when the sun hits it, it becomes opaque. You know, it's just, um, I'm just pointing it out. I'm not sure if I if I have a real strong objection to it, but it is a consideration. And then the other question that we have is the um, is probably the uh, the height of the ele uh, the elevator uh, tower. I don't know if that could be lowered and still effectively keep an elevator in there. And if it would, I'd like to, I'd like to have them just explore that if it is possible to do a low height elevator. But um, I'm not sure if it is. Uh, Chris. This a question I should have asked you before. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, that was something we actually looked at earlier today. The existing roof line dips down lower on that end, um, and it ends up impacting it to where we definitely needed that additional space to make an elevator work. Can you can you move the lifting mechanism to the side and and um, slope the roof of the of the elevator? What we were looking at was basically the the plate line at that spot right there gets down to close to seven feet. The, the existing plate line. So that's where we're bumping it up, basically to try to get 
like an eight to eight and a half foot plate right there for that elevator. So I think we would have trouble even getting a car, the elevator car to fit in that space. Okay. What Thanks. if, what if the, uh, while you're here, what if the elevator were moved to a, a location that's closer to the center of the house where you've got more attic to work with? It, it, it would fit within the height constraints there. It just does, didn't lay out well that way. So we kind of just tucked it into the corner. It definitely needs to be within the existing footprint right. to function. Right. Um, we have the stairway there right now, but the stairway overlaps with the new and the old space. Basically, as you start your way up and then you end up on the, in the new space. But it, the confines of an elevator just took up too much space in that location. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. And I'm sorry, if I could just interject, uh, I, because I'd like to hear your comments on this and everyone else's comments on this. I, I, wanted, I just want to read section 1745070A1 of the zoning ordinance. Uh, and this, it says, Embarcadero area between Surf Street and Anchor Street, which is the area we're talking about. In the Embarcadero, Embarcadero area between Surf Street and Anchor Street, New development is allowed within the bluff buffer area, which is the area 20 feet landward of the bluff, uh, and may be stepped down the bluff face, provided the development shall not require the construction of protective devices or retaining walls that would alter natural landforms or impede public access. So I'm what the question I have is, and I, I'd really like input on this from, from, from everybody, how do we deal with all of these retaining walls in light of that prohibition? Well, I, I, there, there's a key, key phrase in there, I think, is public access. No, it's, it's well, no, I, I yeah. agree. Public access is not an issue. It's, it's that would alter natural landforms or impede public, and mm. I agree, public access is not, on the table here, yeah. Um, Natural landforms, maybe. You know, I, I, you you've got a point on the multiple thirty-inch retaining walls that are being put in there to retain that, uh, and that is a point of contention. I mean, you've got, and uh, and I can I can see it as stabilizing the bluff, but I can also see it as increasing their their level patio area or their level paving area where it, that may not be allowed according to that that ruling and I guess the question the question I kind of had reading that and really I'm going back and forth on it um, do we consider what we're dealing with here to be a natural landform or has this area been modified so much that we're just dealing with wherever somebody piled the dirt when they built something else I guess that's kind of the question yeah. that I have you, they did cut away the, basically they cut away for the parking lot there, which then allowed the erosion to happen. So, you know, I, I'm not, I don't really have a strong, a strong issue on that either way. I'm, I'm more con concerned with the built, you know, what they're proposing as far as the height limitations above that 14 foot. So... Yeah. I kind of look, looking at it more a little bit holistically, I think that <clears throat> we have to take into account the drainage as well. Mm -hmm. And for safety and, you know, where we start thinking about like more severe storms and, you know, climate change and all that, we, we, we have to take, uh, take into account uh, I, I like what he said. He said it's kind of relieving the stress off the bluff if you put a little bit more, um, like, foundation in there. So I I don't, other than, I'm not really making a comment there or against regarding the code. I'm just merely saying that I think it's for a safe, more of a safety and a drainage issue, taking a look at it, at that holistically as well. Anything else? You, you can go ahead, Michael. Um, I'm trying to understand the impact of the addition. I mean, I, I, I understand the existing construction in theory is there. Um, 
for the two-story part, and I, I, I think it actually is going to be much more attractive with, with that little deck section uh, built to the south on the upper floor. It, it relieves the mass of the building pretty substantially. I, I, I actually think professionally I like the idea of trying to get the, the HVAC inside because with the sea air, the external um, exposure of any piece of equipment is significantly higher and it might allow you to break it down into components that might be easier to get your duct work through if you if you looked at another solution you know with what Commissioner Lohr said about the the heights um, I, I guess that the, the size of the deck is is a little hard for me to read uh, I'm, I'm not understanding exactly what the condition is between the place where the skylight is and there's a certain line in, in the exhibit E. Can you go to that one, Whitney? It's not doing. There's a, there's a line in the deck, Chris. What's what we have there is a raised ceiling on the lower floor to account for the stairs and the skylight. And so that's not deck space, basically. So it's up raised yeah, to near the. Yeah, so it, it's not above the height limit, but it's a, it's basically to give it a higher ceiling in that area around the staircase, mm -hmm. and it bring in the, it gives it an area for the skylights as well. I mean, if you look at the lower plan, uh, I mean that you've got a zone along the south, or rather the west edge, that you can get lots of different types of articulation that go all the way up to 14 feet. So. You know, and, and the, the nine feet is passing above, uh, you know, shower, tub, closets. Um, you know, so I, uh, I'd, be, I'd be open to talking more about that. Because I don't think, I think with the, using the existing two-story house in a place where normally we'd be building one story, that's already getting a, a pretty good benefit. And to ask for a, a benefit of any kind on the other side I don't think is, is realistic when we've got height uh, issues all over the city coming before us. And even though it's a glass rail, um, I think it would be nice to make sure everything fits. Um, it's not as if that's a sloped roof area. It's really a flat roof area everywhere, uh, except for a, a few pieces around the perimeter. Um, so I'd be willing to talk about that one with Commissioner Lord some more. Okay. Um, well, I, I tend to agree with both Commissioner Lucas uh, and Commissioner Lure in terms of, um, you know, given the given the fact that we have a non-conforming use, we have a, a use which is unusually impactful in the area um, to start out with. I think I think it's reasonable to try and minimize the impact elsewhere, and and so I, I certainly um, would look at the ceiling height issue uh, as has been suggested. Um, the um, and uh, I would also agree with the relocating the HVAC unit, and I, I would like to see the elevator uh, relocated as well to eliminate that th that extra height. I don't have. I honestly, uh, I realize that the that the the additional chimney is uh, is also you know a further incompatibility. Uh, but I really don't have too much of a problem with that. Um, uh, and a lot of my feeling on this it has to do with the fact that eventually something's going to be built on that lot below you, which is going to really ch uh, change the impact in terms of people who are on the Embarcadero. I also have a pro I do have a problem, however, with the, um, with the patio extending out into the right-of-way. Um, you know, that's right... Because, because I think that is potentially a very valuable right of way to the city. The, the, um, the sidewalk there right now is only four feet wide. Uh, eventually, I think, I think, you know, as Morro Bay grows, as the Embarcadero becomes busier, I think eventually 
additional pedestrian access and a wider sidewalk in that area is going to be um, necessary. Uh, I also think that, you know, just just being up in that area, I think that 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 area, there's a lovely view from that area, and I think that's a potential site for street furniture. I think it's a potential site for one of the little mini uh, parks like we have um, discussed so vigorously in the past uh, downtown. So I, I just don't, I don't think that is, that particular right of way is, is one that we ought to have encroached on. I, I, I know you say that this is not an uncommon situation, but that's why there's a conditional use permit. These things have to be evaluated on an individual basis, and I think that's a site which is potentially um, uh, very, very valuable to the public. Um, the retaining walls, I, th I think, um, I think we have a code that's not re very well written in that particular area. Um, <laughs> And, and I have to say, um, in this particular case, in this particular location, without setting a precedent for any place else, I do think it's. I do think that the the natural landform that may have been there once has been severely degraded, and I don't know what we'd be protecting by enforcing that particular section of the code. So I, I'm I'm willing to say that this would not impact natural landforms and, and allow that to go ahead. Um, um, in terms of neighborhood compatibility, I think that, I, because a number of members of the public spoke to that issue, the issue of neighborhood in compatibility, what, um, what I would like to say to that is that uh, I think you can see that the commission has a concern for that. Um, I think you can see that we're, we're, we're we're looking at that. I think that um, I do think that this whole this whole issue of neighborhood compatibility is a dialogue that needs to be had. Okay, rather than addressing it on a case by case by case basis, that we need to we need to put down some guidelines for ourselves and for the public as well. Um, so that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see the HVAC. Um, uh, removed from the roof i don't i don't really care if it's on the on the on the surface or on the or, or in the attic uh, i don't have a problem with the new chimney i, I would um uh, like to see that the the roof dropped a foot and um um i would like to not have the front patio encroaching into the setback so those would be sort of the conditions that i would want um and yeah, can I ask you to clarify whether you're talking about encroaching into the setback or into the uh, e the uh, easement? It's actually extending out past the property line, the way I'm reading it. So the the front setback, the setback along um, uh, Marina Street, the right of way, the right of way. The right of way. Yeah, no, not right the setback, but the right of way. Correct. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Um, so those are kind of the things. I, and, and I would like to say that um, per, for for myself uh, in the future, and and I, I I have to say again, I'm I'm very influ. Uh, uh, this is an individual evaluation project. So uh, this is a situation where we as a commission get to look at an individual project and. and Separately, okay. Um, I have to say, if this were in a different location, or if this were, if this were not in an area where I believe the visual impact will be substantially changed by development in the future, okay, I'd be looking much more, much more carefully at the question of whether or not bringing this into conformance is in fact feasible, and whether whether that's a condition that we can actually make. Uh, under the circumstances. So I'm just saying that for the future. Any other disagreements, uh, <laughs> arguments? The only, the only comment I wanted to make is I was, I was looking at this a little bit closer as you were talking about the, 
the permeable pavement on the south. If I'm reading the topo correctly, I'm not 100% sure it says what the, the finished floor of the house is 34.28 or 50, 34? Yeah, 34.28. And so if I'm going down a couple steps outside, that's uh, gonna be something like 33. So the corner topo is 28. Mm -hmm. So that's a, and then the 27 is below. So that's a, that's a five and a half foot retaining wall at that point. When I look at the illustration, uh, we don't really have any scale elements there, but it looks more like it's two or three feet. You know, so uh, the, the real impact of that corner as you look from the Embarcadero up at the house, is a, if, if that corner is a five-foot retaining condition to create that patio to the south, that, that's a significant impact. And they've landscaped it there, which I think helps. And, and I, I don't disagree with Dr. Taft that, that the landform's been changed quite a bit, and stabilizing the top actually helps stabilize the hill in some ways with the runoff conditions being taken care of. But, that's a, that's a pretty good retaining wall on the corner there. And if, if it's brought back in, I think it, uh, it helps mitigate some of its size by having more uh, landscape capacity in that zone. Because it, if uh, something does happen with that as a public access, that's, that's a pretty significant uh, structural condition to modify to make the sidewalk longer, wider to go down to the Embarcadero. And since that's that first block, that's not an unreasonable consideration to think about. Commissioner Lucas? Yeah. There's also the condition on the west face where at the, at the property line, you're looking at a 26 foot elevation. Mm -hmm. And with the 34 foot uh, yeah. first floor, finished yeah. floor, you know, you're, you're essentially looking at seven and a half, eight feet mm -hmm. you know, to finish floor. So, so I think that's the, yeah. I mean, that's the condition I think is, is the most critical. Do we, do we want to open up for public comment and have the, the um, yeah, just, just, architect address that again? Yeah, I, I, don't, I wouldn't be opposed to that. Okay, yeah. would you? You know, part, part of this actually gets back to the interpretation of the code that, that Mr. Teff was reading. Um, early on, I had talked with staff and asked for an interpretation on that um, and was instructed that the A.2 section involves area outside of this section. So that addresses the being able to That's rework true. that area. Um, though if it gets determined differently, I mean, if we have to lose the port that four to seven foot, I think you had mis mentioned cutting off four feet of that section there, or add more steps coming out of that, uh, that room, that's a possibility, but the interpretation we were basing the design off of was that the section 1745070A2 applied to existing, existing development within the bluff buffer outside of the de designated Embarcadero area. Right, we're not talking about A2. I, I think the question, I think the concern, as I heard it, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, I think the concern that we all have is the height of the retaining walls. Well, and that's where the A2 would have allowed us to rework the grade right there a little bit. Um, for the more it makes sense, follow that part. A2 is. Uh, oh, what was the section you, you had read? A, A1. A1, that's. A1, but I, I think I think we've decided that the, the I think we've decided that the issue. retaining walls are are acceptable because yeah. the, but the question the question is a, a visual one in terms of their height and that's uh, where I noted the 30 inch max because that that is all we could do at that point because of the distance we are to the property line um, so if we need to achieve that by adding more steps out of that door that's basically what we would have to do to lower it down okay because so, of the the proximity to the property line as well we're we're pat Once you get past the setback, you can't have anything over the 30-inch mark from natural grade. Okay, Chris. Yes. Um, could, could you tell us where the note is that says 30 inches? The thir it's on elevation. On the elevations on A3.1, on the south elevation. To your, oh, you're looking at something pretty small. <laughs> 
Oh, okay. Okay. So we have a 30 inch max there that we'd have to adhere to anyways, just because of the proximity to the property line. So where would you start that 30 inch from? Would you start it from the 25 foot topo or the 26 six foot topo? You know, it depends on where this gets pulled back to, if, if we need to pull that back or not. But if we stop, start at the 26, then yeah, we would be at, adding more steps out of that, out of that okay. doorway. So if essentially, if you could actually terrace this at 30, you know, at we could 30 could break it inch, up as well, yeah. But we'd want to, I mean, uh, to the staff, would there be any minimum horizontal um, distance on that, on each terrace? I mean, if it's one thing to terrace it, you know, every eight feet or five feet it'd be another thing if you terraced it every six inches i don't i don't know, know if we intend to fully terrace it or maybe to basically have a decent sized landing outside the door and then just step down to one consistent height that would that would achieve the 30 inches at the edge okay okay so that way it kind of once we start terracing it, it might just break it up to where it's not that usable yeah yeah i'd, I'd just hate to see a 30 inch a 30 inch retaining wall and then a foot yeah. Foot further back, another 30 inch retaining yeah. wall. It read all as one. Exactly. Yeah. And, it's, and at some point, at some point, you need a railing. If you, if, That's if you, part of the magic how, number as well yeah. as the 30 right. inch. Right. Um, and 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 as, in terms of the in terms of the pavers along the side of the house, along the along the the west elevation, that mm -hmm. pathway, that would that would then be terrace down to the same level as if the... We, if we'd have to step down, and if we can't get it to work, we would just get rid of those, basically. Uh -huh. But if we had to step down to those to get that at a lower level to make the walkway around the back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so we'll bring it back. So let me, let me throw this out, guys. Do, do we want to put that as a condition that there won't be any retaining walls higher than 30 inches? We've, we've, had, yeah. we've had some theoretical discussion here. <laughs> they they need to work some things out. But if we just kind of put that in as a requirement, then they'll work around it. Yeah, I I, I wouldn't have a problem with that. They're they're agreeable to it, and and it makes sense to so that that doesn't read as a massive retaining wall from from Marina Street, not even from Embarcadero, but from Marina Street. Because at some point there will be a building or a structural in front of it. But there won't be a structure in front of it on the marina on side. The marina side. So, okay. So I guess we've got our considerations. Unless staff has some other consideration, is which structures do we allow at you know at which heights, and do we allow or uh, on the proposed drawing they're actually you know running into the right of way. On their proposed landscaping, do do we allow that, or do we do we, you know, recommend that they step it back to their to their property line? So yeah, I can. I I, I can't uh, get a visual on the right of way issue. Can maybe someone we have a discussion on what exactly we're talking about on you know okay. potentially? If you look at the front at the the front. The mm -hmm. first page of their their mm -hmm. plans. Yeah. And on the the drawing to the left, so the furthest left drawing, you'll see the uh, the heavy dark dotted line uh, on Marina Street. Mm -hmm. That's their property line. Yeah. The the proposed pavers and retaining wall closer to Marina Street is in the is in the public right of way. Okay. So. At minimum, that would require an encroachment permit, and as as Commissioner Teft suggested, that is a a prime consideration for widening the sidewalk and ADA access down to the Embarcadero and and all of that. So, if you know, what is our recommendation? We're talking about maybe pulling it back to the property line pulling it back that's to what the I was suggesting line. okay I mean that, not only widening the sidewalk but that that's also a relatively steep I mean not yeah. it's not as steep as some of them but it's it's mm -hmm. it's you know so that might be a place that you want a, a sidewalk that actually meanders right. a little bit rather than going straight down I just 
The skateboarders would love it. Yeah. <laughs> we could even bank it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I personally would like to see that pulled back out of the out of the right of way. Yeah. Okay. Do we have? Are we set for a motion or? Maybe. Um, do, do, do you have some conditions that you've been sort of putting together? Um, yes, and, and I would like to ask clarification on, on a few points, but let's go to retaining walls. Uh, no retaining walls shall exceed 30 inches in height. Okay, with that one. Um, uh, the, could, could we put a linear dimension on the between retaining walls too? Just, just in case so we don't have multiple retaining walls stacked. Right. Yeah. With a minimum of five foot between yeah. each wall. Okay. Yeah. And not necessarily just for this project, but kind of to set. I, I wouldn't normally let, you know, development come forward with, with stepped mm -hmm. retaining walls that were a foot apart. I mean, you really need to have quite a distance between them, and you want to mm -hmm. plant between them to, you know, skewer the walls if you're stepping them to address what would otherwise be a one massive wall. Right. <laughs> just so we're clear. Yeah. No. <laughs> Can I, ask, can I ask him one more question? These are these are wood burning fireplaces. I don't think you're allowed to do that anymore. No. If they're gas, you can do a horizontal vent, couldn't you? Yep. Cor correct. On the lower ones, we went ahead and did the horizontal vent, and we showed the one on the upper floor, kind of just to break up the roof line when you look up from the Embarcadero. Um, the one that's at the peak of the roof that's an existing one that is all the current vent pipes go into that so that's not so that's one that we mentioned we could get rid of though you'll see vent pipes sticking through the roof where they pop out but currently they're all routed to that location okay. and <clears throat> Um, Dr. Teff, are, are you also suggesting to drop that eight foot ceiling, I mean nine foot ceiling to eight feet? And well, I don't know, I don't know if we can specify that because it, that's inside the house, but um, but that lowering that railing, that upper deck, right? Right. You, so is that the way they'll do it? Uh, currently, the currently that upper railing goes up to what? What need? Can you do you have a I think it extends about two feet above the required 14-foot height limit. Okay, so we could simply say that 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 roof and that that the, neither the roof nor the railing in that area will extend higher than 15 feet, and then they can deal with it however oh, okay. they want to. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. okay good. Okay, and again, just for clarification, right now the condition reads, the glass panel railings at the edge of the roof deck shall not, not exceed 16 feet in height, and you're saying change that to 15 feet, correct? Right. And, and it should say neither the, neither the roof line nor the, nor the, the, the railing. And our purpose is not to eliminate that whole deck, but... To allow them to build a deck, but just to bring it down to an eight-foot eight, eight ceiling height. Or, you know, make the attic space smaller or whatever. Again, you know, it's... Well, we just got structure there. Yeah. It's a foot of TGIs. Right. So that's pretty minimal. But I don't know what... I mean, that's minimal. <laughs> but again, underneath, these are largely service spaces. The, the feature bathroom is beyond that upper deck limit and, and can have roof articulation. The master bedroom could have roof articulation up to 14, 15 feet. Um, I think it's just a matter of it may have to change its footprint and take advantage of some of the less prized spaces maybe being a little shorter. And then you can still take into account your stair with a, with a pop-up to get the height. Can we make a comment or are you in discussion? We're pretty informal. You can make a comment. <laughs> um, I'm just curious on that. If the railing height for the glass is an issue, if the roof were to continue up to that height and our floors stay how they are, is that okay? Because it would be below the 17-foot 
allowed for that slope. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think the consensus here is we're only going to allow 15 feet. Okay. Yeah. This is a conditional use permit. Okay, 15 foot for a pitched roof as well then at that point. Right. Yeah. Okay, was your comment something different? No. David Cost again. I just want to address you guys, and we've been at this now for three years trying to make it conform to what we were told. Um, one of the reasons for the nine-foot ceilings is because we're a real advocate of ceiling fans throughout the house. And so our involvement here, we were planning to have um, um, ceiling fans in almost all the rooms hung down, not just that short stuck up against the top where you got to dodge it, but at least have some for air movement and would move in. Because Morro Bay is really natural. We're trying to set this thing up so the natural flows will go through the house to vent off. The upstairs, we're setting windows that we can leave open so it would vent off. Mm -hmm. We set all the windows so we can get that breeze coming through. And the key thing that we were having was these nine-foot ceilings. We were going to have some transoms in the interior doors to allow air to be moving through these rooms. Even though we closed our bedroom doors, we could have air movement between these rooms, through the laundry room, and all this stuff downstairs to keep that flow moving and keep the fans going. So that was one of the main reasons for buying that space is for the fans to move and to allow those transoms above doors to keep the air movement through the house so everything works. Because it will have forced air in this house, so we need to have the air to move. So that's the main reason for buying that space. It's really structural and ventilation and, and the whole package. So thank you. Okay. Well, we are, we do have the conundrum of that is allowed by, by, by code, that if they do a sloped roof there, they could go up to the 17 feet. Is that correct, Whitney? That's absolutely correct, and right now it ends at 14 feet. Right. It ends at 14 but feet. It, it is allowed by code, but, I mean, this is right. a conditional use permit right. process. Yeah, it's and, and it's up to us to balance, you know, the, 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 the pros and the cons you know, mm -hmm. and come up with the decision. So I just, I mean, I'm not advocating one decision or another. I'm just saying this is a decision we need to make now, you know. And the 17 feet is for pitched roofs. The deck right. is flat. Right. So. Right. So. The point for the conditional use permit is, is, is directly on point. It, it's not a pitched roof. It's flat. It's a deck. So. But if they extended the roof line, if they extended the roof at the pitch section outside the deck area, you know, change the pitch so it's a mo so it's a tighter so it's a steeper pitch. They could run that up to where where they hit the 42 inch line, mm -hmm. and essentially that would be blocking out the neighboring views, you know. And still they could keep their their nine foot ceiling heights and and their deck height. But if we condition it to be no higher than 15 feet, then yeah, they I can't. I mean, to me the question to me and, and um, I want yeah. you guys to weigh in. Right. The, the, to me, what we're looking at here is he has a perfectly valid reason for wanting to do this, and I understand what he's saying. And right. there's some concern on the part of the community that maybe that's too high, you know. So I guess what we're trying to do here is balance one against the other, and that's why we get paid the big bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was, you know, I was the one that brought this up, and I can see it, and once again, I can see it both ways. You know, I can see it from the from the owner side, and I can also see it from the from the neighbor side. So, uh, so I, you know, let's have a little more discussion on this. I, I think. I I think we're back in with the commission now. Um, you know, one question I have too, though, however, is what's the what's the height of these peaks right here? That may be that may be over sixteen. the 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 peaks that are the peaks that are facing the ocean, the two the two gables that come out. Do we, right. Okay. I, I mean, I'm sure it's here. I just was. No, that's not it. Yeah. Would. Oh, I'm looking at because if they're already above mm -hmm. 15 feet, then we're... They look like they're at a four, uh, below the 14-foot high limitation. Looks like they're right at 14 feet. Mm -hmm. They're higher than 14 feet. Oh, no, okay. You can look at the elevation and see where the 14-foot line is. They stick up approximately 15, uh, 15 to because those can go up to the 17-foot limit per code. 
Yeah. Um, and that was kind of the design there. So those again are the greater than the four and 12 slope. And those really do help break up the mass of the, the building, so. Okay. But all, I, all I'm saying is if, and it appears that they, it, all I'm saying is it appears that the, the peak of those two gables is about a foot higher than the roof uh, approaching the deck as it's currently drawn. So, so in terms, of, it, 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 other than the glass panels, in terms of in terms of what's solid, those those are probably more in the view of the community than than that wall going across. Um, so maybe. So maybe maybe bringing that wall down doesn't really accomplish anything. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I I, I follow what you're saying. I you know when I, when I look at it, I look at I think the owner did bring up a good point with ventilation and the nine foot ceiling. I, I, I it makes sense, and I have a feeling from a visual standpoint, having that extra foot with those glass panels, and combine that with what the neighbors around have said i i don't really have a issue with with um the height of that i think we're making a dangerous precedent when we go into a bluff area and, and change the heights i think the lower heights are a valid point when there's a two-story house and ample room to develop a, a roof deck over what are service areas down below. And the, the uh, bedrooms have opportunities for multi-point uh, ventilation uh, coming across. And, uh, you know, I guess I just don't agree with that point. I, I, I think the owner has, you know, greatly benefited from buying a two-story house in a one-story zone. And now we're talking about whether we're going to grant them additional height for the part that's new. I just don't see it. So what do you think, Jerry? What's your, where do you come down finally? <laughs> okay, after going back and forth and being on, on the fence and on the railing, <laughs> so to speak, um, I think I, I, I got to agree with Commissioner Lucas. Uh, you know, you can do a transom window in an eight foot, in an eight foot uh, ceiling. Um, so I would like, I would like to see it, see it a, a, a foot lower. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to agree. I I I I think that I think that um I think when you when you have a non-conforming structure and you're putting a large addition on it there's there's a considerable obligation to try and mitigate what's there and and I don't think this is an unreasonable aspect of mitigating it. The the two-story structure is really the the part that's incongruent. The rest of the house I think is you know, it was actually pretty, you know, pretty fabulous. And actually, the single-story structure, in, in fact, makes the two-story even more compatible with what with what the the applicant did. I think they they've done a great job of breaking up the mass. So, um, you know, by in leaving the two structure there, the two-story structure there, and just restricting that height on that, I think I think yeah. that's a reasonable. Compromise, and I'd just like to throw. Uh, this is a little bit off the t topic, but I'd just like to throw out that I think one of the one of the best aspects of this project is the windows on the first story, mm -hmm. because that 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 huge blank wall is is uh, a real issue right now. Yeah. So, okay. does that answer your question in a well, roundabout way? I, I, then I just <laughs> want to clarify: Are we the there will be no height exception for the glass railing, the glass panel railing. Is that where you're headed? Well, I think we're we're allowing it to 15 foot height. Okay, so we're that we're still there. The roof line right. and the glass panel railings shan't, will not exceed 15 feet Correct. in height. What was your um, determination, please, on the um, the HVAC system? I mean, that seems mm -hmm. that should be that should that should be put into the 
into the structure. Yeah. Alter, are, are we? Or in an alternate location. Yeah. Are we all in agreement on that? We is that pretty yeah. consensus? Yeah. yeah. And the elevator, I think, was another issue. Yes. You know, in looking at the plans, I'm. It's going to be tough for them to reroute the you know, re. You know, to set that elevator in the two-story structure without um, without a height, without raising the height. I'm not as concerned about that. I think that's going to be back into the side. It's back in away from the the property line. It's not going to be impacting the neighbor property. Um, you know, if it, it if, doesn't increase the side, the the overall height of the roof, it doesn't. It's not going to. It's not going to increase your your sight line like this railing would. And I, uh, you know, I would I would tend to allow it. It'd be if for some reason he comes, he wakes up at three o'clock in the morning and has this great idea of how to relocate it and er make everything work. Then then I would applaud him for that. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to require it. I don't think we should require it. I agree with you, Jerry. Yeah, I'm okay with the elevator. Yeah, I, I can I, live with it. I did want to point out the way the roof is designed for the one-story section, it looks to me like it's about 650 square feet of deck. Mm -hmm. And it would be a lot easier to let the rooms have higher height and reduce the size of the deck because that's as, almost as big as the second floor of the house. Well, they, they can do that. <laughs> they can do that. Um, did we have any? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead with your. And my last um, point for clarification would be um, chimney heights. It seems to me that um, you were okay with the um, chimney west facing onto the Embarcadero side, and I didn't um, hear if there was concern about the um, existing chimney on the roof. Is that fine? You're good with that? Or no, would you like to see that the, they're, gonna, they're willing to move the vents to penetrations through the roof as opposed to ganging them in that central chimney. Yeah. Okay, so just to um, clarify then, you would, a condition would be to rem, um, remove the existing chimney? Or, yes? No? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm not as concerned with the west-facing one, although I, it would be nicer if it wasn't there, but I'm not going to push that one. Well, the only consideration I have on that, and you, you know, they may, you may think about that, is you're, you're removing a, you're creating a, right. a con condition where your solar is not going to work as well as on that west-facing roof because of that chimney. And if it's just venting, if it's just a B vent rather than a, than truly a, Wood burning fireplace, and you really don't even don't even need it to that extent. So you may look at it. I'm not going to require it, but you might want to look at that because that west facing roof is going to be your prime location for solar panels in the future. Yeah. Okay. So. Um. And one, I'm sorry, one final point on the um, right-of-way patio. Is, are you looking for a condition there regarding in the right-of-way, not in the right-of-way? Was there consensus there? I'm absolutely not in the right-of-way, but we'll, we'll okay. talk about it. Well, the only thing I can see is if they do that, would be with an encroachment permit that would require them to remove it if we have any future development in the right-of-way. That's mm -hmm. how they're framed. Right. Yeah, they require it to be reviewed at their cost, as, well as how the encroachment agreements work. But then, is Public Works going to not do a project because it would require them moving that? You know, just out of the consideration. What's no, no, we would actually probably go the other way. I mean, ultimately, if we wanted to do the project and the requirement was there and they were unwilling to move it, we would move it and lean the home. Okay. And lean the property. Okay. So I'll I'll sidestep to the commission on that. Are you going to be, <clears throat> there's a retaining wall there, so they're going to remove, have to remove that retaining wall and move it back? 
if yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's ultimately would be the requirement. I mean, the, the commission is completely within your authority to request that they move the improvements out of the right-of-way. If they don't, we'll do the encroachment agreement. It'll require the owners to remove it at a, at a future date should the city want it removed, and it'll be at their cost. And if, again, mm -hmm. they don't do it, then we would be doing it in, in leaning the property for that improvement. And it gets recorded against the property, so. I just, I just rather not go down that road personally, but you know, I'm going to get you guys comment on that. I would, I would back you on that. I'm, I'm not as strong as, as strong either way on that, but I would, I would support that. Uh, I, I agree. I, I think it, that if we put it right to the property line, I think that'd be better. Still gives them a sizable yeah. area out front. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you know what they're going to be on the roof. I mean, that's, that's where they're going to be. Are you? I'm okay with that. That's all I have, unless you have something additional. No, thank you. Do, do we know, Whitney, when we look at this image, do we, do we know if the adjacent house was built under these conditions, the contemporary conditions for the, the zone, this kind of buff one here, stucco one? Um, I apologize because I did mean to look into the permit history on that particular site, and I didn't. It's not been that that long ago. Because that would, in theory, that would be the 15 foot height. Right. If if the grades right. were similar, and it could be the grade here actually falls a hair as you I, go I'm, south. I'm pretty certain it was it was built under the same zoning code that we have now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there you can see how much higher the railing is. So just then, just to recap, our conditions are that there there shall be no retaining wall higher than thirty feet uh, and thirty inches. Let's 30. say thirty <laughs> inches. Yeah. Thank you. Thirty inches and 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 no closer than uh, the minimum separation of five feet. Minimum, right? Um, neither the roof line or the railing adjacent to the upstairs deck shall exceed fifteen feet in height. That's what I have here. Um, the HVAC system will be removed from the roof to an alternate location. Removed from the roof to an alternate location, you mean under the roof line? Is that the idea, or do, right. do I need any? Okay. Not, not, should we say not visible from off site? Something. Shall be relocated like under the roof lines? Under the roof line, or they, I mean, there's units that go in the backyard. There's, you know, uh, I don't care where, as long as it's out of sight. Oh. Um, and and there shall be no um, uh, hardscape in the um, public right of way, uh, as aside from the sidewalk and driveway. <laughs> so, as far as HV, HVAC on or or on the ground outside of required setbacks, something like that. It's kind of like the Embarcadero, no, no exposed rooftop unit. Yeah. No, well, no exposed or screened. No rooftop unit, period, right? Right, okay. There we go. So with those conditions, do we have a motion? I'll, I'll make a motion to approve... Um, Let's see, resolution PC07-15 uh, with 
the added conditions that were just mentioned. Do we have a second? Second. I'll second. Okay. Discussion? Seeing none, we'll call for the question. That would be me. <laughs> it's something you did. Sorry. <laughs> uh, Chairman Taft, please. Aye. Vice Chairman Lohr. Aye. Commissioner Lucas. Aye. And last but certainly not least, <laughs> Commissioner Sadowski. Uh, aye. Four, zero, motion passes. Sorry you shocked me, Whitney. I never go first. <laughs> now, I, I technically probably should start with the motion maker, but sometimes I, I gotta shake just things start up. with the term. So uh, unfinished business, we have none. Um, new business, we have nothing on our agenda. Uh, is that correct? Do we, still, do we still have our joint meeting? Do we have that scheduled? March. You do. It's uh, on the 24th. Oh, uh, it starts at 4 o'clock. Here, in this building. So, planning commissioner comments. Well, are you going to send out an email alert on that? Just I will certainly do that when I get back to the office tomorrow. I will send you a reminder. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, I have a comment on the workshop that we uh, were sent to, and I... Oh, I would like to thank you very much for setting that up. I really enjoyed it and got a lot out of it, and it was very interesting to hear the different uh, what other different areas do in uh, in the city, and um, really really enjoyed myself. And I just wanted to thank you very much for setting that up. Thanks. That's great. Hmm. It is. It's fascinating the different environments that different planning commissions operate under. Uh, or within uh, it, it's probably one of the best parts of going to the thing is talking to some of the other commissioners and other staff members from other cities and finding out you know what's one of my standard questions I would ask when I sat down at a table with other folks would be so what's the issue of the day in your city you know I right. mean because everybody's got different things going on so anyway. <laughs> good point <laughs> yeah. okay and uh, Scott uh, this is your forum uh, I got a couple of things. I just uh, was hoping that uh, we will get uh, all of you in attendance at our next planning commission meeting. We have a full agenda. Um, we have uh, two appeal items that are on it. Um, one uh, appealing a staff denial and the other appealing a staff approval. You can't win if you're us, I guess. Uh, so uh, you, you get to see those coming forward. Um, we have the bike park on the agenda for the upcoming meeting, so that should be interesting uh, moving forward. And then and I think Whitney has an item on the agenda too. Do you? That's one of the appeals. Oh, here's one of the appeals. Okay. All right. right. Anyway, there's something else. We have four, but... Anyway, um, so, so it's a full it's a full agenda. Interesting things on it, including a couple of appeals in the bike park. So, should be a good meeting. Hopefully, they'll all be it, there. If there's any of that information that could be disseminated early, that would be greatly appreciated. <laughs> I'll do my best. Yeah. <laughs> and just to, um, I have occasionally just sent out emails to your city email. So I hope did you. Did you all receive, I know Commissioner Tepp didn't, but the, um, the reports, the geologic report and SOAS report, so, mm -hmm. and Commissioner Lohr, and did you check your city email? <laughs> it's still, you know, uh, they show up and then they go away. Oh, I thought I, I, thought I fixed it when, yeah, when I gave it, it to you. Bring it well. If um, bring it back in. I'll uh, I'll look at it again. I thought I had it scored yeah. away. It seemed to be doing that. One. Yeah. I got. I, by the way, I got my issue resolved uh, with this, in terms of the the city email. It's so it's that that's fixed now. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So with that, um, let's just hope that Catherine is out celebrating like heck someplace, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we will we'll adjourn the meeting and uh, see you all back here in two weeks. Thank you. <laughs>